Hello! Welcome to the Among Us channel. Welcome to another series of the Lexus LS430. This is a 2006 Lexus LS430. In case you missed the first video, I'll leave a link in the description so you can check out the first video. This video I'm going to um, do a drive test. Uh, no, I will not push the pedal to the metal. I'm just going to drive this vehicle and get a feel of what it feels like to be in this vehicle. This is a, again a 2006 model, has 185,000 uh, miles on the odometer. I am officially the fourth owner. Uh, the first owner, original owner, bought it and sold it at 48,000 miles. The second owner bought it and uh, did the timing build change around 93, almost 94,000 miles. And he hasn't changed it since. He sold it. He actually traded in uh, at CarMax. Uh, and this auto detailer who works for CarMax purchased it from his employer at roughly about 185,000 miles. The timing belt hasn't been changed. So when I bought it, I changed the timing belt. So this is the third timing belt on this vehicle. And here we are going to go for a drive. So come join me. And uh, if you're new to the channel, please help subscribe. Uh, I'll do my best to keep this channel going. And if you like the video, please also like the video. So let's start again. This is the uh, 2006 LS uh, 430. I believe this is the modern luxury trim. It comes with navigation and uh, the Mark Levinson sound system. It, I actually was quite surprised. It also has a Bluetooth so I can connect my uh, phone and listen to audio directly through the system. And it also has a phone connectivity it can connect up to five phones that can t accept and, and take calls directly through this system as well. So despite this being an 18 years old car, it has the technology that modern day car has as well. Um, I don't like that big infotainment system. It's pointless. Basically, you just need a stereo system and you need to take calls. So it's hands free. So this is this unit has it all. This vehicle was manufactured in July of 2005, but sold as a 2006 model. All of these LS uh, vehicles were manufactured in Japan and uh, imported to the United States and around the world. So this one, again, manufactured in July of 2005, but sold as a 2006 model. So without further ado, let's get it start and uh, get it going. The first video, uh, the first clip, of the, the co-star I did earlier, I recorded that with my uh, Sony uh, A7 III with a better uh, microphone system just so you could hear the uh, sound of the engine. But now I'm using a different mic with my portable um, uh camera that the action camera so that it, the microphone is not a, as good as the other one so do bear with me so let's go with the start all right i love this car it's so quiet the engine the way it starts so here we are it's all warmed up and let's get ready and go let me just check my cameras it's rolling all right, so let's put in drive, uh, reverse, actually, drive on, hit the garage. So let's put in reverse. Um, since the last video, oh, let me um, put into my customized setting to my seating liking so that we can go. So since the last video, I've been, I've just been parking this vehicle uh, for a whole week. I uh, haven't drove it. Uh, because I have the ES350, uh, first generation ES350. That's my daily daily commute car. And this is just my leisure car. So I had it parked in the, in, in the car part and was just all covered. Uh, a little bit dusty on this area during this time of the year. So I just had to cover. And so this is the first day after a whole week that I took it out for a drive. So here we go. 
I do enjoy the drive and I'm gonna take you up to the lake where I'm at there's this lake um, and so I'm gonna take you up to the lake and we go capture some beautiful sunset photos and videos as well so see you can um, hear anything but this is how it is this is how it drives I have this on wide screen so it's a little bit wide um, and so here we go I might have to keep this closer so you can see the odometer but um, runs really smooth and runs really good now in the previous initial video I mentioned when I bought it the tr suspension was a little bit soft and I didn't like it so I, uh, I upgraded to a more stiffer suspension kind of like the sport suspension and so it, it drives handles a little bit better it's a little bit stiffer but it handles really good now so here we are let's go Let you watch the RPM. I'm not gonna push the pedal to the metal, but I'm gonna push it enough so you can see how it accelerate. It just picked off, picked up like that. And I'm just gonna let you listen to the car while I talk to. Uh, I've been looking for this car for several months and um, I was looking for a 2005-2006 model and so finally I uh, came across this one and it was the seller lives uh, 500 miles away and so I just uh, contacted him and uh, drove 500 miles to buy this car and as I promised in the first video that uh, I would reveal the price uh, for this vehicle I appreciate those of you who commented so far only two but I appreciate very much uh, for uh, commenting uh, of what you think the, the price is and I, I, I'm quite surprised how you guys uh, both says that the price I, I paid for was eight thousand dollars for this car and I, I, I was thinking about the same thing too. If I were to guess the price, I would think it's around eight thousand to nine thousand dollars, considering the condition of this vehicle. Despite the high odometer reading of one hundred eighty-five thousand miles, that's nothing to this engine. This engine it's well taken care of. It's piece of cake. You can't go wrong with it. And so based on what I observe uh, on this vehicle when I inspected it it was has been very well taken care of by both the first owner the second owner and then the third owner he had it for just three months he bought it from his employer at CarMax he he's a detailer so he detailed it really good and he needed a forerunner so he just uh, sold this car to get a forerunner and so it was well taken care of when I went to buy it, I checked and uh, under the hood, it was clean, dry, no drip of oil, nothing. And I, when I uh, work under the car, when I change the transmission fluid and I uh, also the differential and the oil, it's very clean. It's, it's a rust free. It, it, it looks almost like a new car. Maybe one of these days I'll, I'll, I'll jack it up again and I'll go under there and uh, and snap some photos to show you but it, it's really really clean this car was well taken care of despite the uh, high mileage and so I my guess to me is if, if, if I were to sell it or, or, or another private party were to sell it it's probably gonna be about eight to nine thousand dollars so both the individuals that commented and, and, and guessed how much I bought for it did list it that I, I, I pay $8,000 for it. But here is the reality. Uh, I don't know if the seller was even interested in making profit or he, didn't, he, or he even care, but he told me that he bought this from his employer for $5,000 and he just listed it for $6,000. 
because I consider the, the work uh, he put in to detail this vehicle. I, I guess he just want, didn't want to lose any money. And so he listed for $6,000 and that was the price I paid for. I went down there and I told him I would buy it. And after I test drove for like three blocks, I told him that I would just pay him for his list price, no bargain. Uh, it was really good, runs really good, and there was not much to bargain. I, I don't see why I need to bargain at that, at, at, at that price. Uh, and so, again, I mentioned the video in the first video. Uh, I mentioned about doing some work on it. I mentioned the, um, I, I, I do the timing belt. Uh, the timing belt, I mean, I changed the, um, the water pump, uh, the tension, and all of the other pulleys uh, in there. Um, and then uh, I also uh, changed the uh, spark plugs. Amazingly, the spark plugs uh, were original from the manufacturer at all the way to 185,000 miles. So I, I, I changed the spark plugs to new OEM um, spark plugs. I also uh, changed the PCV valve, um, and that 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 really helped calm down the engine, uh, not as loud. And then um, I changed the coolant transmission fluids and the differential fluids. Uh, one thing I, I failed to mention in the first video, uh, I also changed the rotors and the brake, just the front. Uh, the, the, the rear brakes are still good, the rotors still good. But just the front, uh, when I bought it uh, on the free, when where I brake is shaped, so I knew right away it needs a, a new rotors. Um, the brake was still really good too, but I didn't want to risk uh, putting those older brake onto a brand new rotor to ruin that new rotor. So I instead just um, just bought the the brake, brand new brake as well. And as I was shopping around, I found this uh, Lexus dealer out of Arizona that has some really good deal. And it's free shipping too, so I order all of my all of my parts from him, them, and they're really good. It takes uh, it takes anywhere from three days uh, to reach me. So it, they, if it's large item, they ship through FedEx. Small item, they ship through uh, U.S. Postal Service. So that's that's pretty much uh, what I did to this car. And so right now it runs really nice, really smooth. Um, and so that's that's just that and so I'm gonna take you on to this little road tour and uh, go up uh, to the lake so that you can uh, you can get to see our beautiful lake up there as well and uh, just to enjoy the view as well um, I have two cameras uh, I have my little action cam uh, I'm holding it and then I have my phone camera uh, mounted onto the uh, onto the sunroof. So uh, you, I I was going to bring my uh, A7 III, but it's too big, and I don't have anything to hold it. And so uh, I decided to just use these two more compact cameras. So I do apologize; it doesn't have the quality uh, as the A7 III but uh, hopefully uh, it serves, serves the purpose just to convey the message. And uh, yeah, so uh, let me know what you think. The, the, it runs really, really quiet, really smooth. Uh, acceleration is really good. Here, I'm gonna make a right turn here at the light and uh, I'm gonna press hard on the acceleration so you can see. Here we go. As it take off, really good. Uh, I fail just to point to the instrumental panel. But, yep, we're going to the lake. So there's a stop sign right here. I'll start right here. Keep the camera on me, hopefully it's on me. Here we go. 
Now the acceleration, let's find it from an angle, acceleration. So, yeah, it it's, it's runs quiet, um, really smooth, really nice, and it has this stiffer feeling because of the new uh, struts I put in. It's very comfortable, a lot more comfortable than my ES350. Uh, handling is a lot better too, and just a lot more comfortable. Very comfortable. And we're gonna, uh, the first video I film in front, on top of the lake, uh, this time I'm gonna go behind the lake. There's this beautiful bridge behind the lake. And so uh, we're gonna go and park there and, and do some, uh, do some uh, sunset photography with this car. I live in this uh, little small town in Northern California, uh, roughly about 60 miles north of Sacramento. It's a very small, boring town, but hey, nothing, no complaints. Peaceful here. I grew up in this community, and uh, I'm still living here. I, I, I travel the world, travel all over the country, and I, I like it here, so I am still here. I live in Sacramento and Elk Grove, specifically. Uh, for some period of time and then I, I moved back up here and so this is where I'm at uh, this is a very peaceful quiet community uh, people have bad things to say about small towns in this area but uh, no complaint I guess there's always complaint everywhere you go so uh, I'm not a complainer I actually uh, enjoy cherish what I have, and the, the what I what I meant by that is, you know, let's let talk a little bit personal. Um, I came here as a refugee. Um, I was I'm a refugee from Laos. For those of you who do not know Laos, Laos is a landlocked country, locked between Thailand, Vietnam, South of China, and Nova Cambodia. And so, in the 1960s, uh, during the Vietnam War. Um, or should I say during the Cold War, uh, the United States government uh, conduct a major uh, covert operation, a CIA operations. That was the largest CIA operations of the 20th century in that country. And majority of my people, my father included, was involved in that operation helping the United States. And uh, at the end of the war, um, these people were abandoned. Only a small handful of them were brought out. And so um, I was born after that. And we became refugees. My father was the subject of uh, persecution for being a, an ally or uh, a surrogate army serving the United States, fighting against the communists. So um, my father couldn't stay in Laos, so we actually fled to the jungle, spent some time in the jungle, and then escaped to Thailand, became refugee in Thailand for uh, eight years, almost nine years, before we uh, came to the United States. And we came directly to here, and we came here and, believe it or not, what a, what a coincidence to talk about it. I didn't even think of this. But today, today, September 23rd of 2000. 
marks the 50th and uh, no marks the 35th anniversary of my family stepping foot in America. Believe it or not, that what a coincidence! I, I forgot about that. Uh, I was talking earlier with my family about it, uh, with the kids, telling them uh, my 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 recollection of our arrival in the United States. But what a coincidence! Here I am talking about the same subject, and that was 35 years ago. We landed in San Francisco in the morning, and we stuck there for the whole most of the day. Until they finally got us to the bus station, uh, in on like a little bit after 3 p.m., and uh, transported us to Sacramento, where my grandma, uh, my mom's mother, uh, was residing here at the time. Uh, they came as refugee in 1981. Uh, they were sponsored by the church, uh, likely the Catholic Church. And they came to uh, Portland, Oregon. They relocate to Merced, California, and then they move up to this uh, town called Oroville. And they uh, settle here, and they sponsor us. So they brought us here to Oroville. And amazingly, it was right around this time. I remember clearly. They picked up. They greeted us at the bus station in downtown Sacramento, and they brought us up to Oroville. And I remember my best memory was the sun. I could see the sunset, and I I was sitting on the on the driver's side and um, in the back in the van, and I was I just watched the sunset as we drove to Oroville, and that was the most memorable moment of my life arriving in the United States. So every time when I drove through that stretch on Highway 70. Uh, coming from Sacramento to、uh, Marysville, it always reflects on that day whenever there's a sunset setting situation. So what a coincidence! But、uh, yeah, I don't mean to go a little bit too too too, too personal, but yeah, I, I came here、uh, as a refugee and、uh, I started school in the fourth grade and didn't didn't I didn't speak a, a single English word, didn't know my alphabet. I probably could count to ten, maybe I don't quite remember. Um, so I came to this community. The、uh, the Asian Southeast Asian community here is fairly new at the time, and、uh, people people、uh, probably didn't know much about us. The, the the community here didn't know much about us.、Uh, they thought we're Chinese, and we're like, no, we're not Chinese. Well, where are you? I said,、uh, I'm a Hmong. Mong, you come from Mongolia? No, no, I came from Laos. They didn't even know what Laos was at the time. So, yeah. So, but the, what's interesting is my first day at school, as a fourth grader, I befriended some、uh, two Caucasian kids. I still remember their name, Jason and Jeremy. And oh, and then another one.、Uh, gosh, what's his name? Um, um, I forgot his his name. It's been so long,、um, but I befriended with three Caucasian kids my first day at school, and、uh, I think his name is Robbie, 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 Jeremy, and Jason. These were the three Caucasian kids I befriended with, and believe it or not, Jason and I still work for the same employer to this day.、Uh, we we work for the same employer, and so.、Um, This is the community I grew up in,、um, and this is home. You know, when you're a refugee, you have no place to go. You you have no place called home. So when I、uh, arrived here, I it was it was a lot of challenge, language barrier. You you going through the cultural adaptation,、uh, all these transitions, and、uh, many of my friends, my peer.、Um, That I grew up with end up into gang. It was in you know in in the 80s into the 90s, and in early 2000s, and、uh, a lot of Asian gangs、uh, activities, and so a lot of my peers、uh, took the wrong path, and they、uh, they got into gang. It was it was a sad sad situation. Those are some really bright and very courageous kids who, due to the poor.、Uh, Support 
and guidance uh, in the community and in, in the parents because of, of the, the illiteracy and the language barrier and cultural barriers, these kids who were very compassionate just messed up their life and got into gangs. So, yeah, here we are. I'm going to take you out. And we're going to go and do a little video out here to show you uh, what it's like in this little community. Uh, here, this is the beautiful scene. So. so, this is the uh, Highway 62, 162 uh, going up to... Um, Bucks Lake and it all the way into uh, Quincy, I believe. Um, so there's a bridge, beautiful bridge here, and this this is the back of the dam uh, lake. You can see there where the sun is. That's the front of the lake. Uh, it's beautiful this year because of the rain. We still got plenty of water. Usually by uh, this time of the year, you don't see that much water, but yep, it's still here. Uh, let's take. The again at this beautiful, beautiful park. Now, the other day, I, I, I did the first video and it was in the morning, so with the light, lighting, you don't, couldn't see the real color of this car. But now with the evening, you can see the beautiful color of this car now. You see that beautiful, beautiful color. Yep, that's the real color. Love this color. I didn't think of. I initially thought about getting a white or a silver, but when I saw this color, I just fell in love with it. It's beautiful. Just look at that. Beautiful. Just look at the color. Look at that. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Very beautiful. So I continue to share video, um, but this is just a drive I, uh, to uh, to do a little drive video. And so, um, yeah. And and you know the the, pre, the the first video someone commented that the viewer appears that the front wheels are bigger than this, the back. And they're not. They're, they're the same size. Just that when I took it, if you look at from like this angle. It just look bigger because I'm closer to the front. When I go here to the back, the way the camera lands is just diffuse and make the, the back look bigger. But these are these are good gear, and there are the um, I don't know you can see it, but the P245 45R18. That's the tire size, and these are the 18 inch chrome wheels. So it's really nice. Looks really 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 nice on this car about it it's really really beautiful uh, this color is just so natural natural I mean you you park in the open in the field like this it, it blend in fit in with nature and that's that's what I like about it so yeah it's really nice and show you the sunset sunset beautiful sunset over there uh, it doesn't do good with this camera but uh, I'll, I'll edit it uh, so you can see the beautiful sunset yeah, that's the sunset over there. It's so beautiful. This back view of the lake is. Second video on my LS430. Thank you very much for taking the time to uh, uh, watch this video and appreciate if you could like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I will continue to do more videos uh, and uh, we'll go from there. Again, I'm so proud and glad to be part of the LS uh, club. So uh, yeah, this is mine. Plan to keep it for a while and again in case you missed it 
I did say in the beginning, the initial video, I asked the viewers to guess how much you guys think I pay for this vehicle. So again, the, the seller listed for $6,000. I like that price. I didn't even bargain. After I test drove for three blocks, I just offer him three, uh, $6,000. And that's the purchase price for this vehicle. So it's really, really nice, really good deal. I'm very glad I got it. I'm very grateful that he was willing to hold, I mean, 500 miles away. He showed me a list of close to like 90 people reach out to him, wanted to inquire about this vehicle, but he was willing to hold it for me. And uh, I really, really appreciate him for um, uh, doing that for me too. So, Batman, if you hear this, thank you very much for holding the car for me. Uh, it's meant to be. And the funny thing is, I would say the license plate, all of my cars start the six. And when I saw this license plate, I say this car is meant to be with me and my family because all of my cars, four of my cars, I have a RAV4, an ES350, and a Sienna, all of them start with a six. And this one just add in addition to the family. So it's meant to be. So again, thank you very much for your time. Like the video, subscribe, and until the next time, may you and your family have a wonderful day, wonderful evening. And may God bless you. And until the next time, we'll see each other again. Bye-bye.